no place on earth has such unique attractions and stories like Berlin. As a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. When the fate of our world was at stake, all eyes were on Berlin. The vision and unification of the entire German nation happened right here and it profoundly shaped the city. Berlin evolved into one of the most popular tourist destinations in Europe and as a tour guide I'm excited to show you all top sites in Berlin and tell you their amazing story that starts with the river Spree. And fascinating facts that Berlin has more bridges than Venice and more canals than Amsterdam. No wonder that boat tours and river cruises are one of the best things to do to get to know Berlin. Several cruise companies offer guided boat tours, providing insight into the city's history and landmarks. The riverbanks offer pleasant walking paths and in summer this becomes a popular cultural and entertainment area with many riverside restaurants and bars offering scenic views. The river also played a role during the Cold War when it served as a natural border between East and West Berlin. Spree was a major highway of the Middle Ages. It was full of ships transporting goods and on one of its islands a small trading town emerged. But it was not Berlin. Surprisingly, it was called Köln. But right across the river there was a second trading town and this one was called Berlin. From the two towns developed modern Berlin and the riverbank where the old Berlin was founded is now known as Nikolai Quarter. This historic small neighborhood with cobblestone streets and old houses is scattered around St. Nicholas Church. But it's all an illusion. If you visit St. Nicholas Church, you will learn why. Church is the oldest in Berlin dating back to the 1200s. It has two impressive recognizable spires. But St. Nicholas Church is not used for worship but now serves as a concert hall and a museum with a permanent exhibition on the history of the quarter. So what happened to the old Berlin? Like most of the city, it was destroyed by World War II bombing raids. After the war, Berlin was split between East and West and Nikolai Quarter ended up in the Soviet sector. For 40 years it has remained in ruins, but for the 750th anniversary of the city, in 1987, East Germany government attempted to recreate the medieval core of Berlin. St. Nicholas Quarter was rebuilt according to historical records and at least some charm of the old Berlin was back. Two small trading towns, Köln on the river island and Berlin on the mainland formed close ties. They grew thanks to the river and the trade and in the 1400s the two towns merged and became known only as Berlin. Newly merged town was part of Brandenburg state, one of hundreds of individual German states and territories united in the Holy Roman Empire but each with its own ruler. Kind of like an EU but mostly for Germans. Brandenburg state was named after its capital town Brandenburg an der Havel. But in the 1400s the capital moved to Berlin and the city started to rapidly expand. To enclose the expanding city a new ring wall was built. And this was one of its gates. From here the road went straight to the town of Brandenburg an der Havel and hence the gates were named the Brandenburg Gate. A few decades later simple city gates were replaced by a monumental ancient Greek-like entrance leading to the boulevard of linden trees heading directly to the royal city palace. But in the post-World War division of Berlin, the Brandenburg Gate ended up on the dividing line and the Soviets built the wall right in front of it. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Two years after Reagan's speech, the wall fell. On November 9, 1989, the East German government announced that citizens could freely cross the border into West Berlin. Following the announcement, large crowds gathered at the Brandenburg Gate to celebrate. People climbed the wall and there were scenes of jubilation and unity as East and West Berliners came together. The gate became the symbol of reunited Berlin and the end of the division of Germany. After 28 years of separation, the concrete barrier was finally gone, but the reason why the wall was built in the first place dates to the end of the Second World War. After the defeat of Nazi Germany in World War II, the Allies divided the country in four parts controlled by different countries. A few years later, these four parts formed two new countries, a democratic West Germany and a Soviet-controlled communist East Germany. Even though Berlin was deep within the Soviet sector, it was agreed that the capital was also divided in four parts to match the division of the country. And when East and West Germany were formed, so was the East and West Berlin. 
At first, the division of Berlin had little impact on everyday life. People could easily cross the east-west border while running daily errands. But the existence of West Berlin, a capitalist city deep within communist East Germany, posed more and more tensions. Over the years, more and more people from the East used Berlin as a gateway to escape the Soviet regime. Eventually, the East German government had enough, and to stop the flow of emigrants, they've started to build a guarded concrete barrier. Everyone was shocked, as overnight in the summer of 1961, the first sections of the wall went up, and eventually, the wall completely encircled the entire West Berlin. This is the last piece of the wall with preserved grounds behind. It serves as the central memorial place of the German division and is called Berlin Wall Memorial. About 1.4 kilometers or 0.9 miles of the former border strip houses an open-air exhibition about the history of the division. You can learn about the wall in the visitor center and the documentation center. Among several monuments is also the window of remembrance. A monument is dedicated to the victims who have died during an attempt to cross the border as the wall made it impossible to get from East to West Berlin. Except through one of the three checkpoints, and Checkpoint Charlie was the most famous one. In October of 1961, one of the most dramatic moments of the Cold War happened here and the whole world held its breath. Tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union significantly increased a few months before when the Soviets started to build the wall and increased travel restrictions to enter East Berlin. When the US and French tanks approached Checkpoint Charlie, the Soviet tanks confronted them. The whole world gazed at this checkpoint as American and Soviet tanks took up positions and faced each other with weapons primed. Tense confrontation ended peacefully after Khrushchev and Kennedy agreed to withdraw the tanks and reduce tensions. After the event, Checkpoint Charlie became the symbol of the Cold War, used as the setting for many thrillers and spy novels. About half a year after the Berlin Wall fell, the checkpoint was dismantled. But tourists wanted to visit the famous former border crossing that has become one of Berlin's primary tourist attractions. A copy of the guardhouse and the sign that once marked the border crossing were reconstructed. Now, the original remains blend with reconstructed parts, all based on the original site. A large photo shows one of the last US soldiers that left Berlin in 1994. In the vicinity, you can find several museums dedicated to the wall and the Cold War. You should be careful when visiting the checkpoint, as it stands in the middle of the street used by everyday traffic. You can check the description below or use QR code for my favorite Berlin Cold War experiences. But another Cold War site became a popular attraction for completely different reasons. It's called the East Side Gallery and it is the longest open-air gallery in the world and the longest remaining section of the Berlin Wall. Immediately after the fall of Berlin Wall, the former Great Dividing Wall along the River Spree was painted by 118 artists from 21 countries. In more than 100 murals on what was the east side of the wall, the artists commented on the political changes. They've transformed a grey relic from the times of separation into a colorful monument to the freedom of expression. The most popular work replicates the photo of Soviet leader Brezhnev and leader of East Germany Erik Honecker engaging in a socialist fraternal kiss. East Side Gallery has become a tangible representation of the end of the Cold War and a place for contemplation and remembrance. The place is also worth visiting as it faces the iconic Oberbaum Bridge and offers a relaxed atmosphere with bars, museum and a riverside promenade with occasional events, performances and exhibitions. For the best experience, you can attend one of the official tours that lasts around one hour and are free of charge. Just be sure to check the schedule beforehand on the official website available in the description below. But besides the Cold War attractions, Berlin is also adorned with much older and more beautiful royal architecture. The state of Brandenburg with its capital Berlin united with another state of the Holy Roman Empire, the Duchy of Prussia. In 1701, the unification led to the creation of the powerful Kingdom of Prussia and Berlin became its royal capital. The first Queen of Prussia, Sophie Charlotte, built herself an impressive summer palace, now the largest and most magnificent in Berlin. The Queen was a great lover of art and she decorated beautiful rooms with top-class art collections. She invited poets, philosophers, musicians and artists to join her. 
but her husband, King Frederick I, could only visit the palace if Sophie personally invited him. Today, the palace is a museum that showcases the history, art, and culture of the Prussian royal family. There are several tickets available, but be sure to see the old palace as a prime example of Baroque architecture. It houses a variety of collections, including paintings, silverware, and other decorative arts. Particularly impressive is a porcelain cabinet showcasing a remarkable collection of Chinese and Japanese porcelain. Some of the rooms are furnished in period styles, giving visitors a glimpse into the lifestyles of the Prussian royalty as the palace served as a royal residence for various members of the family. But Charlotte died aged just 36 and in her honors, King Frederick named the palace and the entire area Charlottenburg. The palace is surrounded by Berlin's most beautiful and popular garden. Winding paths, picturesque ponds and stunning views are the main features of this outstanding Baroque garden. The Kingdom of Prussia was very successful in its military conflicts and it eventually took a dominant role among the German states. But to establish itself as one of the great European powers, Prussia needed to up their game by also showing its cultural supremacy to the world. And so, a unique ensemble of five museums were built on the river island just north of the royal palace. A cultural and educational complex on the River Island became known as Museum Island and is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The first museum was opened in 1830 and is called the Old Museum. Its antique-style neoclassical architecture reflects its purpose as it was built to house the art and antiquity collections of the Prussian royal family. Pergamon Museum is the most visited one as it displays one of the most important collections of Greek and Roman art in the world and an extensive collection of Islamic art. Unfortunately, this museum is going through complete renovation and is expected to be closed until 2027. Part of the collection was moved to the Panorama building across the river with an impressive huge circular picture of ancient Greek city of Pergamon. Also very popular is the new museum as it displays the world-famous Egyptian bust of Nefertiti, dating back over three millennia. Here is an extensive collection of Egyptian artifacts, collections from Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age, and classical antiquities from ancient Greece and Rome. The Bode Museum, at the tip of the island, is renowned for its sculpture collection, which spans from the Middle Ages to the late 18th century. It includes sculptures, busts and decorative arts from various European regions. One of the unique features of the museum is its extensive collection of Byzantine art and a substantial numismatic collection. The old National Gallery was inspired by old Greek temples and thus rises on high pedestal. It houses one of the most comprehensive collections of European art from the 19th century. Collection spans from German Romanticism to early Modernism and also features artworks from the Biedermeier period. But what happened to the mighty royal palace? The main residence of kings was dominating Berlin for 500 years as one of the largest buildings. A royal and imperial palace served as the main residence of the Hohenzollern family, who were at first the rulers of Brandenburg state, later the kings of Prussia, and lastly German emperors. After the fall of the German Empire at the end of World War I, the palace became a museum. In the Second World War, the building was heavily damaged by Allied bombings and after the war it ended up in Soviet East Berlin. But instead of being renovated, the palace was completely demolished. In its place, East German authorities built a modernist building of the East German Parliament. But after German reunification in 1989 and years of debate, the building was demolished in order to make place for a partial reconstruction of the royal palace. Reconstruction became Europe's most expensive cultural project that was finally finished in 2020 as the Humboldt Forum. Building serves as a collection of museums and institutions dedicated to human history, art and culture. There is an impressive foyer connecting high-rise modern gallery walls with a reconstructed palace portal. The second and third floors are displaying artwork from many different countries. Between the royal palace and the museums stands Berlin Cathedral. It was built as a Protestant counterweight to St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City and a tomb of the Prussian kings. The cathedral's history dates back to the 1400s when the Prince of Brandenburg moved his court from the city of Havel to the newly built palace in Berlin and a parish church was built on site. 
In the following centuries, there have been several reconstructions and expansions. In the 1800s, Protestant Kingdom of Prussia was rapidly rising in power and they wanted to show their power also by building the largest Protestant church in the world. Berlin Cathedral was designed to rival the Roman Catholic Basilica and Vatican and so the church got its final appearance in 1905. Unfortunately, the cathedral was severely damaged during the Second World War and ended up in the Soviet-controlled East Berlin. And that is why restoration of the cathedral was completed only in 1993 after the unification of Germany. Besides religious services, the church also offers cultural events as it hosts over 100 concerts and events per year. The highlight of the visit is a climb to the cathedral's impressive dome. There are 267 steps to get to the outer walkway that offers a beautiful 360 panorama view of Berlin. The panorama of the city is dominated by the TV tower, another massive structure built to demonstrate power. Like Prussian kings before, the communist leaders wanted to show off their power and technological advancement. The very symbol of East Berlin was the fourth tallest freestanding structure in the world. Tower's primary purpose was to provide television and broadcasting, including both radio and television signals. The opening of the TV tower in 1969 was part of a grand celebration for the 20th anniversary of the founding of East Germany. With its height of 368 meters or 1207 feet, the TV tower is still the highest publicly accessible building in Europe. The distinctive sphere at the top of the tower, which houses observation platforms and a revolving restaurant, has become an iconic feature of the Berlin skyline. As the TV tower is one of the most popular attractions in Berlin, you should book your tickets well ahead, so be sure to check the description below. Sphere can be reached by two very fast elevators. From a height of about 203 meters or 666 feet above the ground, you can enjoy the best view of Berlin. Part of the sphere is also a revolving restaurant, which constantly slowly rotates and makes a full circle once every 30 minutes. To make this powerful symbol visible from both sides of the Berlin Wall, the TV tower was strategically located in the city center of East Berlin, right next to lively Alexanderplatz. This was the heart of East Berlin and remains to be the biggest and the best known square in reunited Berlin. It was named after a Russian Tsar Alexander I in his honor of visiting the Prussian capital in 1805, but citizens simply call it Alex. Square received a major overhaul and expansion in the 1960s by East Germany government, transforming it into the nerve center of East Berlin. Extensive reconstruction introduced the socialist architecture as the square became a central location for grand parades, political and other social events in East Berlin. Part of the major redesign was also an unusual world clock built at the same time as the TV tower. Clock's main feature is a large 24-sided column where each side represents one of the 24 time zones. The clock quickly became a popular meeting place as Alexanderplatz is the busiest transport hub in Berlin with all types of public transport. Since reunification of Germany, Alex has been constantly developing into a popular dining and shopping area. On the opposite side of the city center is the heart of once West Berlin. Kurfürstendamm Avenue is the best shopping and entertainment area since the 1800s when it was designed as a horse riding and promenade street. It quickly evolved into a prestigious residential and shopping area lined with elegant shops, theaters, cafes and luxury hotels. During World War II, many buildings along the avenue were destroyed. With a post-war division of Berlin into East and West, Kudam Avenue found itself on the western side of the city. As modern shopping centers, office buildings and hotels replaced some of the war-damaged structures, the avenue became a symbol of West Germany's economic miracle. But the most prominent landmark of the boulevard is the partially destroyed Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church. It serves as a reminder of the World War II devastation and stands as a symbol of reconciliation and peace. The church was built in the late 1800s in honor of Kaiser Wilhelm I, the first German emperor church suffered significant damage during World War II air raids. The damaged spire was preserved and inside the remains of the old church you can find a display of photographs and information about the history of the church and its significance during and after the Second World War. In the 1950s and 60s a new church complex was built adjacent to the damaged original church. 
The walls of the new church are made of a concrete web filled with more than 20,000 stained glass inlays, producing a unique rich blue light and atmosphere. But besides the unusual church, Berlin offers other quirky and surprising experiences, like having a lunch on the top of the German parliament. <laughs> this is brilliant! If you visit the Reichstag rooftop terrace, you can enjoy a great panoramic view of Berlin, walk through the Glans Dome and peek inside the German parliament. Oh, and like any other decent parliament building, it has a rooftop restaurant. But the story of the iconic German parliament building surprisingly starts with French military leader Napoleon Bonaparte. Famous French military leader destroyed old European empires, including the Holy Roman Empire that was for centuries uniting German states. After Napoleon's defeat, the Kingdom of Prussia with its capital Berlin took the initiative to reunite German states, but this time under their control. This man, William I, was a Prussian king who became the first German emperor. In 1871, a German empire was born. Berlin became its capital and the Reichstag was built as the seat of the new government. But soon it witnessed several important historical events. Just decades after it was founded, the German Empire lost the First World War and the revolution that followed ended German monarchy. The German Republic was proclaimed from the Reichstag. But this satisfaction with the consequences of the First World War brought Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party to power. In 1933, a fire partially destroyed the Reichstag and the very next day, with the Reichstag fire decree, Nazis suspended most civil liberties in Germany and took full control of the country. In 1945, two Red Army soldiers hoisted the red flag of Soviet Union on the top of the Reichstag, symbolizing the victory over Hitler and the Third Reich. After the unification of Germany, the Reichstag became the seat of the German federal parliament known as the Bundestag. The building got its famous glass dome that immediately became a landmark of Berlin. Once the border area between East and West Berlin has become a political center of Germany with several government buildings symbolizing the country's commitment to unity and democracy. But the number one Berlin attraction is actually on the outskirts of the city. It was so beautiful that the Prussian kings left Berlin for it. A glorious combination of nature, art and architecture is so unique that it boasts the highest concentration of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Prussian royal family loved this paradise of palaces and parks so much that they moved the court from Berlin and rather lived here. At first, Prussian King Frederick the Great built himself a summer palace. It was called Sansuchi, which is a French phrase for without worries. The palace was meant as an intimate building for living and a relaxation rather than the seat of power. That is why it was surrounded by the world-renowned park with its distinctive terrace grounds and a majestic fountain. The park has several pavilions and is so big that it requires 60 gardeners to maintain its flower beds, hedges and vast lawns and meadows. But later, King Frederick added a colossal palace building known as New Palace in the western part of the park. The enormous Baroque palace displayed power and strength to the world as it is crowned by an impressive green-colored dome. Large palace complex has grand banquet halls, splendid galleries and even an entire theater. When Second World War was ending, Potsdam hosted a meeting where the three leaders of the Soviet Union, the United States and the United Kingdom decided on the division of Germany and Berlin. Potsdam is a great half-day trip from Berlin accessible by the S-Bahn which takes approximately 40 minutes or the regional express train that takes about 20 minutes. But besides its top sites, Berlin offers much, much more, so be sure to check the QR code or description below to find my favorite tours and experiences. My name is Rock, thanks for the thumbs up and for watching, and see you next time.